My name is Josh Madden. I'm the youth director here at the church, and I want to take a brief moment just to say thank you. Um, this congregation um, supported our youth ministry in an amazing way for our youth gala, and to date, y'all have helped us raise over $25,000, which is an amazing, amazing testimony of your um, belief in our students and belief in the ministry that we have in taking our kids beyond the area of Baton Rouge and taking them to camp, taking them to Jamaica, taking them to New Orleans, and a way to just love on students. And so I say thank you. But this morning, we've come to celebrate the story, the story of God, as we have written in the Apostles' Creed, an amazing testimony to our faith, our belief in God, our love for Him, and how He has called us to go beyond ourself. So before we open God's Word, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for a time to open your word. We pray that this morning, the God, that you would speak your truth over us. The God, we would be reminded of our faith when we first fell in love with you, God. That you would continue to stir that flame in our hearts for you until it overtakes all of who we are. Jesus, we come this morning asking to hear from you. Speak through your word. We are here to listen. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Hear God's word. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. Therefore do not be ashamed about our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He's the God who saved us, who called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose, his grace, which he gave to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now he has manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death, he brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of sound words that you have heard from me in faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit, who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Beloved, although I was eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. We've come to celebrate his story because we know that man does not live by bread alone, by every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, for me, a little part of my story of, of growing up was I didn't grow up in the church. It wasn't really until I got into high school that I ever actually came to a, a, a church building. See, when I was in high school, I got invited to, to some friends, like Pete was telling us earlier, to come to a Bible study. We had youth group. We played games, and I got to know the youth pastor, and we had fun. But one of my friends finally said, hey, would you like to go with me to big church? I'm like, well, what's big church? He's like, well, that's on Sunday morning. You're not going to do this on Wednesday night. It's on Sunday morning. And here's the only thing that you need to know. You need to dress up. You can't come in shorts and a t-shirt to big church, right? This is where the big church stuff happens, right? So I, I vaguely had little memories of me as a little kid in church sleeping on my grandmother. And that's all I really remembered. And so I got slacks and a little polo out and was going to go to church. Now, we showed up a little bit late. And that became a huge problem. Um, not because we were going to get embarrassed, but because we had no idea what was going on. See, I'd never been to any kind of Presbyterian church. And unlike our nice little bulletin, which has got highlights and asterisks, which tells you when to stand, all I saw was a lot of people standing up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down. And I had no idea what was going on. Now let me rewind just a little bit. The night before... We had stayed up and watched the 90s remake of Dragnet. 
you know, the old cop show. And in this, they, in this remake, they go back and they go and go undercover as a part of a cult. And they're at this cult meeting and, and there's a lot of the person up front saying something and everybody rotely saying back to them something else. There's no script, there's no bulletin they're handing out, they just know what to say. And so here I am, like a 14, 15 year old boy, know we're at big church, and here are these people saying crazy things. No one's telling them what really to say. I, I didn't see when to get up. No one stood up and said, please stand. They just, everybody got up. And then everybody started saying things back and forth. And it was so odd to me. Where in the world have I been taken to? What kind of church is this? Is this like last night? Or is this something good? I, I hear things that I recognize from Bible study. They're talking, and I've heard them say Jesus a couple times. But I don't really understand what's going on. See, we have a great help. We've got bulletins, right? That is a huge help that we know that there is a, a flow and an order to worship. But I had no idea what was going on. And this got even more concerning to me as they said, finally someone comes up front and says, Christians, what do you believe? And without any cue at all, everyone in the congregation stood up and began to say the words of the Apostles' Creed. And I'm looking around going, where are they reading this? There's no, there's no screens for sure. There's no bulletins in their hands. But all of these people somehow know this thing. Like we're saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Where did they get this inside information? And there, there was two things I, I saw about that. There was, they're saying some great things. They just called Jesus Lord. I, I believe that. But what was very concerning to me was I looked out over all of them, and they were saying great things with this kind of face. I believe in God the Father Almighty. And are just so monotone, so zero passion that they, they, they said it. Now, what I began to realize as I've grown up in the church more now was we say it all the time. Just like Pastor Garrett shared last week of when it comes time to say the Lord's Prayer, it's kind of like, well, that's the prayer we always say. I want something, something more. And for me, whenever I heard the Apostles' Creed and I looked at these faces, that they were just saying things that they knew to say because that's what you do. Not because they really sat there and said, and I believe that he has given us the forgiveness of sins. There was no passion. I was so confused. And, and I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that now every time I say the Apostles' Creed, it's like the brave heart warrior chant, here we go, we're going into battle, Apostles' Creed. I, I, I'm not. I grew up, I was around youth kids many times when it came time to do the Apostles' Creed because we'd all said it all the time. All of us in our little youth section in the church sat there and talked in different voices. We tried to use an English accent. Well, I believe in God the Father Almighty. You know, we just kept, you know, completely irreverent. But there's something as, as I began to think about this week and as I began to think about my own testimony is, do I believe those words? Am I still in love with that God like when I first began to believe and Him to grab a hold of my heart? See, Paul was writing to Timothy and he said, Timothy, don't be in fear. You have spirit, you have power in the holy God. He is the testimony that from the beginning of the ages, this is who you've called to be. Not you, Timothy, only the robe people, right? The calling is for all of us, right? It's every single one of us. The calling is not just for those who will come and work at the church and do big church. It's all of us. And so this morning as we look through the Apostles' Creed and we think about it, I want us to go back to the early passion. See, for me, when I look at the church today, I think about, we talk about our toolbox. We've talked about the Word. We've talked about prayer. We've talked about the sacraments. Things that we do all the time and we talk about all the time, but we so easily can put them back in the garage and not think about them. We don't just play with tools around our house, right? You don't just twiddle, you know, a, a measuring tape or a screwdriver all the time. No, you put it away and you go get it when you need it. 
See, my fear for us is a lot of times we do that with faith. See, the West has been great about knowledge. We, we've sought to gain all the knowledge in the world. And even the young people today, you have no need for a teacher. You have no need for books. All you need is that internet thing, right? That with a little bit of help, you can go and you can learn anything in the world. Now, do we want kids learning from the internet as their only source of education? No. We want teachers. We want people to guide them. But our pursuit of knowledge has meant that we've got it figured out, and when I need it, I'll go get it. And when I don't need it, I'm going to put it away. And I, I feel that a lot of times with our Christian faith, that's what we've done. You look at believers in Asia who would desperately love to look at just one single page from this book. And, and if you've looked at it, go Google it today on the internet. Back to there we go. The believers, when they see the Bible for the first time, they want to see it because they can't have it. They want to see just one page of this Bible and they want to soak it up and memorize every ounce of it. Where's that passion in you and I? Or believers in South Korea or in Egypt who desperately get on their knees and pray out to the Almighty God because they know they need to hear from Him. He is their only hope. He is the only thing that will give them great joy. And they desperately cry out to Him. And yet you and I sit here all the time and mumble and pray through and don't believe in the power. And my hope is that this morning as we talk about the Apostles' Creed, as we talk about 2 Timothy, that you and I would be called back to that very first passion. See, the first thing when I think about the Apostles' Creed and Paul's words was this is an affirmation. Timothy, you have fell in love with God. Know that it's not going to be an easy road. But know this, that from the beginning of all eternity... God had a plan for you. And that for us, we come in here and we will say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And if we just stop long enough as we're saying those things or stop and look at the words we're saying, those are big things to say. You are God Almighty, meaning, God, you are in control of every single thing. Nothing that happens, happens without you, God. You are in complete control. And we believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Are you really ready to say that? That you get the Lord's seat of my whole life. You get it all. It is completely 100% you, God, living in me. Are we ready to say that? That every decision I make will become because I have a belief in you, God. Are we ready to say that? These are big and powerful things, but I think a lot of times we just keep moving along. And Paul was affirming to Timothy, Timothy, he is our God. He is our Lord. Trust in him. Trust that he will give you power and his spirit. Not for you, not because you're something great but because of himself. And my friends, this is what we gather around. We gather and say the Apostles' Creed to affirm what you and I believe. We affirm that we are nothing and that in him he has given us all things. The Apostles' Creed is also a mirror and a guide for us. See, you and I... The other part of knowledge, we can get it anywhere now, right? You don't need encyclopedias, you don't need things, you can get it anywhere. But the other part of knowledge right now is what you believe, I don't necessarily have to believe. What you care about, I don't necessarily have to care about. And then there's the other question that I know all too well because I have a three-year-old. Why? That's I hear it all the time. I also work with teenagers. That's all I hear almost every day of the week. Why, 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 why? Well, because daddy says so. Well, no, but why, 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 why? You know, why is, I've got a pen and it is blue. Well, well, why is it blue? Well, because that's the ink inside it. It's blue ink. Well, why? No, well, 
Because it's blue. That's what they said. Well, why is it blue? Well, that's the color it is. Well, why? It, just, it goes on and on. Or the question becomes, well, you say it's blue, but I say it's a lighter shade of black, right? And when we play this game, and I'm being a little facetious here, but it, it is. We can put anything you want to talk about, and there's a question of why. And this isn't all bad. The, 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 the pursuit of knowledge and the pursuit of questioning is good. That we question and say, well, why is that so? We believed it to be this, but you know what? There might be something else there. I still hold, because of my upbringing, that bacon is going to be the cure for something. If we just eat enough bacon, it will be the cure for something. I know it. I, there's somewhere in there, somebody's going to figure it out. The, the questioning of knowledge is sometimes good. We find greater truth. But it is the questioning that you and I will face every day of our life. Christian, why in the world would you believe that? Christian, why in the world would you believe that God would let that happen? Christian, why in the world would God do that to his only son? Why? Tell me why. And you and I have an Apostles' Creed as a way to hold on to a, a, a fundamental part of our faith. But it's also the mirror and the guide that we place everything against. God, I don't know what I'm going to do with this part of my life. I'm going to go this way. I work with teenagers, and so as they get ready to go to college, all of them begin to ask some version of this question of, what is God's plan for my life? Should I go to Texas Tech? Absolutely. It's the Lord's school. Should I go to LSU and pursue education? Should I go and go this way? What is God's plan for my life? Well, go back to the mirror, to the guide of, of God's word and to the Apostles' Creed that says, does it match up? Does the things that you're thinking, the, things that, the thoughts that you're running towards, does that match up with your belief that Jesus Christ is our Lord? Does it match up that we have one holy Catholic faith, that we are not big C Catholic, but little c universal faith? Does it match up against that? That when you and I come to this place every week and confess our sins, are we coming in here drawing near to Him and saying, God, I need you? Or when we sin, do we run away ashamed? And do we run away hiding, hoping that he would not find us? See, our faith is one of the holy passion in us that when we fall away or when life doesn't go the way it was supposed to, that we would run towards God. And it's also our witness. Our faith is our witness to the world. It is a foundational block in all of our life. See, the funny thing about tools, I have tools. I like tools. This is I'm not going to beat anybody with this. Um, I love tools. Um, like Pastor Garrett was talking about last week with um, his love of tools is also one that he doesn't really like fixing things. And I don't either. Mainly because I try to figure it out, and the beauty of the internet now is you can usually find a YouTube video on how to fill in the blank. There's somebody who's put up a video of, here's how you can really do it. But for me, every tool really is one of these, right? No matter if it's a screwdriver or my handy tape measure, it's all really just a hammer to fix things. We just want to get it out there that we, we're going to, it's just not going to work. But the part about tools I really like is they're great to build things. I love, absolutely love to build stuff. Um, it's part of something I've had and loved since I was a little kid. Um, it was my favorite tool, toy. And if we're really honest right now, it still is my favorite toy, and that of Legos. Absolutely love Legos. They, I, I just love that my little girl still likes to play with Daddy and the Legos, which is really, Daddy's playing with the Legos and you're watching. Um, but she loves to come knock them down. But for me, I love building blocks, and I love building. Because there's something about that's in us that we love to create. That we love to create things, and we love to put things together. 
And we love to have things nice and neat, and we put them together so that what? So that we could show them to someone else. I want to build these cool little things in my house so that my daughter can play with them. Or I want to build a table so I can work off of it. And for you and I, we have great building blocks. We have great tools. You have prayer. You have God's Word. We have the Apostles' Creed, which we say all of the time as a great building block for your faith, but also as a building block to share with everyone you come in contact with. Sure, your coworker may not say to you, well, tell me exactly what you believe. I just want to know. But somewhere, some way, God will make a way for you to share your faith. And the question comes back to us, what will we do? Well, we say just kind of, well, I believe in the Bible. I like it. It's, it's God's word. It's kind of cool. Um, or we give them some passion that says, you know what? I believe the things that are written in here. He is the God that has transformed my life. He is the God that I have put my hope and my trust in. See, the world is needing a story. We chase after all sorts of stories. We go after the story of success. We go after the story of building great temples to ourselves. We go after the story of the American dream or whatever you want to call it. But the world is searching for a story that is so much bigger than that. A story that will stand up when tragedy comes. A story that will stand up above it all. And you know what? Hold on to an absolute truth that God is God no matter what you and I do. He will be the God and King over us. The world is searching for a story. May you and I take that faith. And in a few moments when we affirm our faith, may you do it with a deep passion because those are the words that God has given to you. May you find it. May today as you say the Apostles' Creed, may it encourage your heart that God has reached down out of heaven and opened your eyes to see Him. May we find beauty in the ordinary things because he is teaching us and showing us himself. Amen.